For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sutner, here to unpack his column titled, Betraying the Liberation Struggle. ANC renewal is empty and we already have an alternative version for South Africa. So what is so important for you to make a case to the effect that the ANC has betrayed the struggle? Is it not being sentimonious to judge the ANC, especially since you spent so long in it? Yes, well, I spent so long in it, but I didn't steal. Um, so that I, uh, I don't think anyone's got any evidence of me committing wrongdoings in the ANC. I'm not saying I'm an angel, but so I'm free to talk about it. But what I want to, to do is to not just say, oh, this is good and this is bad and this is depressing. I wanted to give a framework for judging how betrayal happens. And what I argued, I got from reading feminist theology and feminist ethics, it's the notion of connection. When people joined the struggle, they formed a connection with the oppressed people of South Africa. In the case of black people, they were already connected to the oppressed people because they came from there. And many people got involved because they saw policemen humiliating their father, asking him for a pass. I remember one person I interviewed, he said to me, I always thought my father was the biggest person in the world. And then when I saw the policemen do it, I saw there was something higher than him. And when they joined the struggle, they didn't, it wasn't the same as for whites who had to link up with something uh, who was oppressed without being oppressed themselves. But they had to keep in their consciousness that link they had to their mothers, brothers, sisters, and other people from the oppressed communities. But what I understand to be betrayal is when you break that link, when you do something that hurts the people from whom you come, or the people to whom you have said you devote yourself, you are committed to bettering the lives of these people. Now, when you steal from them, when you divert funds from for Nkandla, when you kill them, uh, then all these things are examples of betrayal. You're doing something that undermines the well-being of those people, and that constitutes a betrayal. It's not just something like uh, if you believe in Marxism and you decide that instead you will believe in some form of existentialism alone. It's not a philosophical thing. It's a case of what you do which hurts people. If you are supposed to be helping people, embodying their pain as your life, and instead you drive them out of their homes, that is betrayal, and that betrayal continues today. And why are you so dismissive of renewal? Is it not that Ramaphosa inherited a very difficult situation and that it would be very hard for anyone to manage it? And that is a process that is still ongoing. Well, it was difficult because Ramaphosa had a very limited majority in the ANC and had to find a way of not driving people into open opposition to him to try and win them over. But I think he went too far. They took these people right into key positions. And that was, in my opinion, more conciliatory than was necessary. But it's continued. And it's not just the Zuma people who are practicing wrongdoing. It's also some of the people from the Ramaphosa camp who have been named or alleged to have committed corrupt acts and other things. And there's no sign to me that it's getting any better. You also have the situation where the president doesn't seem to be in touch with the feelings of the poor. He, for example, is continually displaying his wealth. Now, in a country of people who are starving, I think it's important that you're sensitive to the optics, what it looks like to display wealth as he does. 
And also he goes to Soweto during the election campaign. I think it was Orlando and they didn't have power. And he said, I'll fix it up. So he fixes up electricity in one part of Soweto. And what about the rest of Soweto? What about the rest of the country? It's just, there's just a, I don't think there's a sense of compassion for the poor. And that I think is very serious and an indication that there's not a real commitment to renewal. And lastly, Raymond, you speak of there being an alternative version, and that is the constitution. So how can it be an alternative if it's already there? A friend of mine was saying to me, I must work on this concept of the unifying vision. What is a unifying vision for South Africa? And then I thought, we've already got a unifying vision. It's the constitution. But the problem is that the constitution is being bypassed, or it's being undermined, or it's being defied. And I think it's very important that we stop the situation where people have to go to court to get the government to abide by the supreme law of the land to which they swore an oath of office to abide by. And that is why I said that the constitution is the alternative to the present, but it has to be restored to its place of respect, which it has not been adequately given. So that's why I, I raise it as an alternative, because it's, it's not it shouldn't be an alternative, it should be at the center, but it's been pushed to the sidelines. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about betraying the liberation struggle in Sierra Noel is empty and we already have an alternative vision for South Africa.